pretty amazing how how everything works out whenever we just allow God to do it and He shows us that everything that we do is important. Everything that happens in our life is important. And everything that, that, that we do with other people and for other people and, and, and helping other people is, is always important. There's always there's always an end result. There's always a reason for it. There's always something that happens because of it. But have you ever wondered why it seems like some people are more accomplished than others? Some people it just, just seems to happen to, and, and some people it doesn't. And, and it, is, well, it seems to be more than just sheer talent. You know, a lot of your most successful people, they have a frame of mind that, that, that moves them up the ladder, so to speak. They have a frame of mind to continue to move forward and continue, in the spite of adversity, to continue to strive to do more. And, they, and, they, and, they, and it kind of pulls them into a, a, different, a different place, in a different way of looking at things, a different way of, of receiving things and, and doing things. You know, Billie Jean King was real good at tennis, and Michael Phelps, he could really swim. And another one comes to my mind, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, when he started golfing, he broke every record. And today, he can't even win one game of golf. And now, I like to watch golf. I really do. Uh, I was been watching last year, about three years ago, uh, a young man by the name of, of Jordan Spieth started out, and he was, he was breaking all of Tiger Woods' records. 24 years old, professional golfer, on the tournament, on the, on the PGA Tour in 2015, he won five of his 11 victories at, at, with the FedEx Championships. He did great. In 2018, he's almost half over, and he hasn't won one game. Nothing physically has changed. What has changed? Frame of mind. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Scientists say that Mother Nature has hardwired the human body with a negative bias for survival. The brain focuses on the negative experiences and barely acknowledges the positive ones. We root, routinely calculate risk by making judgments about the things going on around us for our own safety. When we see something negative, we get a hold of it, we look at it, and it makes an impact on us. When we see something positive, it usually floats away and we can't learn when it happens. I would, I would venture to say that anyone that was coherent and standing upright and focused on January the 28th of 1986 remembers when the space shuttle blew up on those 73 seconds in the liftoff. I'll bet you can tell me where you were standing and what you were doing. On September the 11th, I'll bet everybody here can tell me where you were standing and what you were doing on that moment. But a week later, where were you? What were you doing? Well, I didn't think about it a week later. See, we, we, we naturally grab onto the negative and we hold on to the negative and the positive things in our life tend to not be important. And then we develop this thing called fear or anxiety or depression or the things that come along with the negative side because we're focused on this negative. If, if you go onto YouTube and you look at all the, you pull up, just go, to, just go on YouTube and just type in prophecy. And they will try to instill you with more fear than you can even handle. With just ideas that men have about how it's going to turn out. And, and did you know that the 27th was supposed to be the last day of the world because it was a full, full blood red moon for an hour and a half right over Jerusalem, right over Israel. And for, for without a doubt, without a doubt, according to scripture, Jesus was going to come on that day. It was the end of the world. Remember Y2K? Remember all of the negative things that have happened just in your lifetime that we can still remember the day that it happened. Can remember events that led up to it. I remember a guy from Las Vegas uh, in 1999. I was living in Texas. I had a little, little farm there. And, and a guy from Las Vegas came out and bought the property just down the road from me. This was like in August of 1999. He pulled in a big double wide mobile home. He drilled a well. He put in the septic tank. He had the power brought in. He built it. We, I helped him build a 24 by 24 building. He filled it with barrels of gas. He filled it with food. He filled it with all kinds of stuff. He spent whole six months getting ready for Y2K. <laughs> 
He was without a doubt for sure that January 1st, the computers were gonna crash and the world was gonna go chaotic and he was gonna be ready. Why 2 k came, nothing happened. He had moved his family there. He had moved his kids out of school. I mean, he, he, was, he was set, ready to go. And he spent the next six months, the first six months of 2000, he spent moving all that stuff out of it. <laughs> but see, we, 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 we latch on to those things that could possibly have an impact on our life. And what does the Bible tell us? You have no promise of tomorrow. But we let the negative things that happen today drive us into a place where we're not trusting God at all. We're, we let the negative things that come along, we look at the negative things, we think, oh, God's out of control. It's all going to go chaotic, and I don't know what's going to happen to me. As if God just completely forgot about you and said, oh, well, I got bigger fish to fry, and I really don't care about you anymore. Where do you read that in the Bible? You don't read that in the Bible. <laughs> He says he'll take care of you. He says that he'll, he'll guide you through and he'll lead you. If you'll just trust him, if you'll just give him an opportunity in your life and begin to focus on the positive things that God is doing in your life, and let the negative things of the world be the negative things of the world. Because if you're really following the Lord and you're really trusting Him in everything that you do, there's not a whole lot of, a lot of negativity in your relationship with the Lord unless you bring it with you. Let him be the positive focus of your life. Go to Romans 12. Romans 12, or 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. What is the measure of faith? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. That's faith. I think I can. The pretty soon you can. Because what are you thinking? That you can. My mom always said, can't, never could do nothing. Okay. If you can't, you're, you're absolutely right. The minute you say, I can't, you're absolutely right. You can't and you never will until you change your frame of mind. There's no doubt in my mind that physically, Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth are just as capable of competing and being at the top of the mark every game they play if they change their frame of mind. But they walk out there hoping they'll have a better game than last time, and the last time they had a game, it was terrible. They're hoping for a little bit more instead of just asking for the most. Knowing that they're capable, knowing that they can. Oh, I don't know. I used to be able to do that. Used to could. We thought I even had a sermon about used to could. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's that frame of your mind, and that's what that's what that's what the teaching, that's what Paul's teaching in Romans. You got to change the way you think. You've got to quit focusing on the negative. When the negative thing comes, you know, the uh, experts tell us that it takes three positive thoughts to offset a negative thought. When something negative comes along, it's not going to give up on you because that's the enemy trying to hold you back. And he doesn't give up right away. So when the negative thought comes, we've got to think, well, I need to quit focusing on the negative. I've got to be by the renewing of the mercies, by the faith given me in the Lord, that I can move from the negative to the positive. Something good is going to come out of that. Remember, uh, maybe that, um, I can never James. remember his name. James. He was writing that, what, James. James Bailey had writing that song. God can turn this problem into something good. God can fix this problem, and I know he would. He promised to work all things together for our good. God can turn this problem into something good. we got to believe that. we got to renew our mind. We got to change the way of our thinking. If you can take anybody that has ever been an accomplished whatever, I know a lot of ropers that could go out and rope calves and be at the top of the game. Always roping good, lots of confidence. They believe that they could. The minute something happens and they begin to miss, the minute something happens and they begin to be consistently missing, it takes a very, very, very long time to overcome it. Because there's always that thought in your back of your mind you're going to miss. 
you're going to miss. The minute you get in the box, the minute you're ready to go, I hope it don't miss. When they used to think, I'm catching this one. Frame of mind. Frame of mind. We get in our car, we start to go somewhere, and we think, oh, no. Looks like there's a dust storm coming. Negativity sets in. And we immediately begin to focus on it. And we let this drive. We drive around like this. Watch that dust storm. <laughs> I hope it don't come get me. We focus on that negative stuff, and it takes away from all the blessings that God wants to give us. It takes away our joy. It takes away everything. And then remember, so when a negative thought comes, remember, it's going to take three positive thoughts to overcome this negativity that's in my mind. I had a couple that, a young guy that I helped out here at the church, we helped him out many years ago, and uh, he, he got going, and then he got in trouble again, and wound up in prison, and he got out about a little, not quite a year ago, and for the last six or eight months, he's been, he's been making it on his own. And he made up his mind when he got out of prison, I had a chance to visit with him for quite a long time yesterday, <clears throat> he made up his mind when I get out of prison, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, and I'm going to do it on myself, by myself. I'm not going to lean on anybody else. I'm not going to ask for any help. I'm going to make it on my own. And for six months, he got a job. Now, even with his, with his background, his, his criminal background, he got a job, and he, he found a place to live, and he got back on his feet, and he's been going, he's been doing good, and he was at work, and he hurt his arm. So now I can't go to work. He's working for a landscaper, and he hurt his arm moving a big rock, and so now I can't go to work. And all of a sudden, the negativity sets in. All of a sudden, I was trying to, and I was doing good, Pastor. I was doing it all by myself, and I was doing good. And then I hurt my arm, and I said, right there is proof to you that you cannot do it by yourself. You can go out there, and you can run the race, and you can prove to yourself that, oh, I can do it all by myself. And the Lord said, go right ahead. <laughs> because you're going to trip, and you're going to fall. We have to have the Lord in our life. We have to have the Lord leading our steps. We have to have the Lord guiding our way because the minute we begin to, to, to prosper on our own, we begin to look way out there at what we're going to do next. What great big thing I'm going to do next. I was reading somewhere that Bill Gates bought uh, 25,000 acres in Arizona. Wow. He's going to build a green community. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a land of dirt <laughs> see when, we, when, we're, when we're doing it on our own we tend to focus on things that seem impossible we set ourselves goals that we can't even reach but we, we just trust the Lord as I explained, explained to Jason yesterday you've got to learn first of all you got to learn to trust the Lord one day at a time I get up in the morning, I read my devotional, and today is the day that I'm going to give to the Lord, and at the end of this day, I'll thank Him for it, and tomorrow we'll do another. If tomorrow comes. But see, the minute we may begin to make a plan, and, and tomorrow doesn't turn out like we thought it was going to, negativity sets in. And now, even our, even our best opportunity to do what we were going to do is now diminished because we've let neg negativity come and take a hold in what we're trying to accomplish. Negativity will take away all of your accomplishments and everything that you do. My son, he texted me. He texted me sometime back, maybe eight or nine months ago. Dad, I'm really having some big anxiety issues. I've got a, a wife, and now I have two kids, and I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. I don't know how I'm going to... And, and as I was praying about it and asking the Lord how I respond to him, I wrote, texted him back, and I told him, you know what, anxiety is a fear. Because there's faith and there's fear. That's all there is. There's nothing in between, nothing on either side. You either live by faith or you live by fear. And I told him, I said, anxiety is a fear of something that you have no control over. And you don't know what you're going to do. And if you continue in that anxiety, it will take away everything that you have. It will take away your family. It will take away everything you have as long as you hang into that anxiety. You have to realize that it's a fear and determine not to be afraid. Change your frame of mind and begin to think of positive things. Well, I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to ask the Lord to help. And you have to trust. 
that the Lord is going to tell me. As I explained to Jason, I said, the Lord is really giving you the opportunity. He was telling me while he was in prison this last time that he said, as he said, I was in prison. I got into a Bible study group and he said, I just ended up with a lot of questions and a lot of confusion. I said, that's fantastic. And he looked at me with his eyebrows down. He said, what do you mean? I said, now you have questions that you need to answer. The God gave you the question and the confusion that you're the confusion, but the, the misunderstanding that you have. So now that you have an opportunity, you can go and learn and answer your questions, and he'll answer your questions when you begin to follow. Him. Or you can just let the negativity part drive you wherever you're going. But we have to learn to trust. We have to learn to let our mind be something that we use for positive things. I can if I follow the Lord. I can overcome everything that comes in my life if I allow the Lord to show me how. And if I trust the one that I ask, if I really trust that God is who he says he is, and I really trust that God can do all the things that I ask him to do, and I really trust that God can give me through this life, then trust him. Get up in the morning and, and ask him and tell him, say, okay, Lord, today is yours. You get me through this day and then we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow and begin to let him do things in your life. And as I explained to Jason yesterday, when you begin to trust him, when you give him an opportunity to work in your life and he begins to work in your life and you begin to see it and recognize it, then you'll begin to follow more and more and more. But you have to make that step. You have to begin to trust. You have to move from the negative to the positive. Studies show that optimistic people have lower stress levels move faster up the career ladder, have fewer health complaints, and live longer. Here's, here's some positive thoughts for your negative situations. Focus on the upside of a downside situation. The minute something comes and there's adversity to you, oh, this is terrible. No, it's not terrible. I'm just looking at the negative side of it. What's the positive side of it? What, how can I grow from this? What can I gain from it? Pinpoint the opportunity contained in the difficulty. Oh, this is tough. But there's an opportunity. This is too hard. The harder it is, the bigger the opportunity is in it. We have to be willing to take on those difficult situations. We have to be willing to, to stand tall in it. You know, if, if Tiger Woods or Jordan Speed are standing on the tee box and they're looking up, Oh, I hope I can just get that far. Is one way to look at it. I'm going to hit this ball, and however far it goes, I'll play it from there. And I'm going to be confident that wherever this ball lands is where it needs to be so that I can make my next best shot. The, the, the frame of mind. What are you thinking when something happens? See, naturally, we're going to focus on the negative. Naturally, right away, we're going to go to the negative. I'm going to talk about Judy right now. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> something happened. The Department of the Motor Vehicles sent Judy a letter and said, you need to come in for a driving test. And for a whole week. And I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> for a whole week, Judy fretted that thing. She was like, what if I don't pass? See, negativity jumped in. And said, oh, this is terrible. You're not going to make it. What are you going to do when they take away your driver's license? Here's the negativity working on the other side of it. Here he goes. She's just all, all bright shining the next day. I passed my driving test. Yes. Well, of course you did. <clears throat> of course you did. The frame of mind could have been, you know what? This driving test is going to be fun. It's going to be really great to show the lady that I can still drive. See, negativity sets in and wants to take away. And she told me, she said, I was nervous. You know, when you go to take your driving test, you have to drive up the lane and get the back end to the slot. And they have cones. There's nothing there to see but the cones. She says, I was so nervous when I drove in, I forgot to look where the cones were. <laughs> so I had no idea where I was supposed to back up. So I just backed up. And I passed. It's like, oh, I wonder who did that. <laughs> It's automatically fail right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> but see, God, God says, I can handle that. I can handle those things. I know all the things that are in your life. I know how to bring you peace. I know how to show you that I can take care of you if you just trust me a little bit. If you will focus on the positive side, you can go to it and say, you know what? If I fail the driving test, guess what? I don't have to drive anymore. I'll have a chauffeur. <laughs> I 
Oh iya, anjing. 